you ask, how do we actually test the electrical behavior of our thin films? Where is our thin film that's mounted on a teeter block, ready for testing? First, we prepare a wafer of sapphire, which is like sapphire jewelry is made out of, to mount the sample on top of. So here's the sapphire. We put some paste on there, adhesive, and then we take the thin, the thin film on the substrate and we adhere it to the top. We push it very carefully with the tweezers into that adhesive to make sure it's well seated. And then we leave it under the heat lamp for a while so that the adhesive can cure. And we have to solder very, very carefully with really small materials. So we actually solder under a microscope. And what we do is we take gold wires between the sample and the sapphire. So we put solder points of indium on the sample, four of them, and four solder points of indium on the sapphire. And we run a really fine gold wire between the sample and the sapphire. Then we run a larger copper wire that's still very small, weak, uh, thinner than a human hair, from the sapphire to the apparatus it's going to be mounted in, which I'll show you in a minute. We use a razor blade for stripping the copper wire, microscope so we can see what we're doing, the sample of course, and we're going to solder with two different solders. So this is the soldering iron that's used only for the indium solder and regular solder is used for the other process and we use a different soldering iron for that so we don't cross the two solders. So here's the sample with its wire. So you can see the sample is right here, the sapphire is right here, and it's resting on a microscope slide just to make it easier to move around. Here are the solder points and there's a really thin gold wire going from here to here. And then here is the copper wire, which is enamel coated. And we just scrape off the end of the copper wire so that it's exposed, the copper center is exposed, and it's electrically conductive for completing our circuit. Before we mount it into a testing apparatus, we do check all the connections to make sure the solder is good with a voltmeter. This one is reading zero, so that one is not good. And here is the arm that goes inside the cryostat. Each of these knobs is connected very particularly to something in the apparatus, and we connect them to these four right here. So we'll take a copper wire from here, solder it onto here, here, solder it onto here, etc. So you've got it connected in four different places inside the machine. In order to complete this, we actually need to get some liquid nitrogen. So we go down and we collect the liquid nitrogen. And while the liquid nitrogen is flowing into the tank, you can see the ice crystals that form on the pipes leading up to the tank just because of the moist air in the room where we're transferring the liquid nitrogen. It's a pretty cool look, so I included that photo. So the sample has been placed inside the chamber. It's right inside here, inside this window. This is slid on, screwed on, very carefully tightening the screws. And then this whole apparatus here is, this is going to be the bottom of it, is placed into here, the support, because this is where we hook in the liquid nitrogen. We hook two lines here to a computer, which is right over here. If you can see that in the corner, no, nope, can't quite see it. But there's a computer right here and a bunch of voltmeters and such that control the volts and the amps that go through the sample. So once we assemble the vacuum chamber, but before we actually start the measurement, we hook up a voltmeter between here and here, and between here and here, and measure the resistance both ways. 
naturally the resistance between here and here we would expect to be greater than here to here. This is just kind of a quality control check to make sure everything is working out okay. Then we will cool the chamber with liquid nitrogen and then really slowly warm it back to room temperature or sometimes we need to warm it a little bit above room temperature depending on what peak of our graph is. And you can see on the computer, here is an example of one of the graphs. This curve right here is our resistance versus temperature graph. This is the peak of it. And it's this slope right here that we want to be as steep as possible. This is what we call TCR, or temperature coefficient of resistance, which is some other things in there, but contains the slope of this original curve. So that is how you measure the resistance of the sample.